FigJam is the whiteboard by Figma. In this video, I'll guide you through all the key features of FigJam. Most of the tools are very similar to those of other whiteboards that I've reviewed. But some are unique, like the vanishing comment, or the fact that plugins can be created by the community, but also some features that are included in the free plans for other whiteboards, but instead need to be purchased in FigJam, like voting or audio conversations. I create an account and try the free version of FigJam. The free plan, that's called Starter, includes a few features from Figma. If you want to upgrade to professional, you'll have to pay 12 euros a month for Figma and 3 euros a month for FigJam. So let's use FigJam for free. To evaluate FigJam, I will use my whiteboard evaluation sheet, where I've established a few criteria and reviewed them for all the main whiteboards. When we launch FigJam, the first thing we are shown are the templates. The graphic of the templates is relatively simple. It looks nice and quite playful, and I think I can say it sits in the middle between the Microsoft Whiteboard Dry Templates and the more sophisticated Miro ones. Templates are either made by Figma or by the community. To use the same method I've used for the review of the other whiteboards, I will start from a blank whiteboard. The graphic user interface is nothing new. It looks quite similar to Miro, Mural, Microsoft. FigJam has an infinite canvas as all the other state-of-the-art whiteboards. There's only one background color available, and you can't use images as background. Let's start by having a look at the authoring toolbar, which in Figma lays at the bottom. If we click on the marker icon, then the inking tools will appear. And I'll now use my Wacom tablet to test the drawing experience. The marker has two standard thicknesses, thin, and the thick one. We have eight preset colors, but we can also choose custom colors. The second inking tool is the highlighter. Also in this case we have two thicknesses and eight preset colors. The third tool is the washi tape. I don't know what that is, so let's try it. That's a tape. And we can choose different patterns for it. The fourth tool in the inking tab is the eraser. When I touch on any inked content, the eraser will delete the full stroke. Let me undo. So there is no pixel by pixel eraser. I can also use the eraser on objects. So let's remove this washi tape. That's it for the inking tools. Now that we've put some content on the whiteboard, let's look at the selection tools. So I can select objects and move them around. Select the highlighter stroke and also move it around or select the single strokes that I've drawn before. I can make objects longer, we can rotate it, or make it larger or smaller. The hand tool allows us to move across the whiteboard. Nothing new here, very similar to any other whiteboard. The next tool is the shape tool. There are four preset options. Let's use the ellipse, for example. Inside the shape, we can add text and we can further format the shape. We can change color, add a line, make the text bold or strike through, and we can add a link to the text. We can do bulleted lists and left, center or right align the text. We have five preset font sizes, or we can change the font size manually. Let's go back to our shapes and see what else we have. Besides these four predefined shapes, we find other eight types for 2D additional shape types, as well as two 3D cylinders. File shape, let's make it blue, and the folder shape. Shapes have nine predefined colors, but in this case it seems it's not possible to pick a custom color. The next tool is sticky notes. Sticky notes have one predefined square shape. They can be made larger, we can add text to them, and at the bottom of the sticky note, you'll see the author. If we click on plus, we can create a new sticky note with the same formatting. We find the same formatting options for the text in a sticky note. And here we have the option to show or hide the author. Sticky notes can't be rotated and we only have one shape available. Let's move on to text. There's one font available and the formatting is the same as we've seen before. Let's make it large, for example. The text box can't be formatted. So if, for example, you want a background behind the text, you'll have to create it 
with a rectangular shape. It's a good occasion to show you some additional formatting for the objects. We can copy and paste them with Ctrl C and V on PC, bring them to front, or in my case, what I need to do is send them to back, and I can lock or unlock an object. So in this case, I can drag and drop to select both the shape object and the text, then right click, group them. Now, if I move them around, they will move together. And if I want to lock them, I can just click on lock. A lock icon will appear. And to unlock it, I will only have to click on it. When you've grouped multiple objects, you can further align them. Objects can also be copied as an image, exported, or you can create a direct link to that object. So if you want to point collaborators to a specific object in the whiteboard, you can just give them that link, and then they will open that link in a browser. And the link will point directly to the object. The next feature is connector. Connectors are used to link two different objects. For example, let's link the cylinder with this text box. Once linked and moved around, the connector will remain linked to the two objects. Connectors can be formatted. You can pick the color, the thickness with two preset options. You can choose whether it's a solid line or a dashed line. You can add text, format the start point, and the end point. Let's also use a straight line as the second type of connector. The next tool is section. So let's say I want to create a section out of these two sticky notes. I'll drag and drop so that they're put in the same section. We can assign a color to the section background, rename it, toggle the visibility of what's inside the section, that's useful if you are the author of the whiteboard and you want to hide some part to your collaborators. For example, because you want to guide them through a process and reveal content step by step. The next tool is Stamp. Stamps are a collection of reactions. We have a thumbs down, thumbs up, heart, voting dot, question mark, star, plus one, and your profile icon. So for example, I can give a thumbs up to this rectangle and if you're running a voting session, then you can put your voting dot to this file shape. Or you can ask participants to vote by giving a plus one. By clicking on the smiley, you have access to eight other emojis. These reactions are not meant to stick to the board, but are for immediate sharing of your feelings and will disappear in a couple of seconds. You also have the option to add a vanishing comment this is something that I haven't seen in any other whiteboard. Basically, you can type a comment, which will disappear after a few seconds. It can be used for less important things. But in case you want your comment to be permanent, don't worry. We'll check out this option in a minute. The last tool is the widgets, stickers, templates and more. Here you have access to a ton of content. Stickers, templates that we've already seen at the beginning, widgets, so let's try, for example, this Giphy widget. Or let's add a pie chart. This is nice and very convenient. You can change the values and then the chart adapts. The next tool is plugins, and it's an important one. Developers can create plugins and make them available to the community. Here we just see a few examples for brainstorming, diagramming, workshops, and by clicking on See All, we can have access to all the plugins. If we don't find what we're looking for, we can browse for more in the community. Plugins have a great potential. However, at the moment I got a bit confused on what would be worth installing and what not. And I would actually prefer if a stamp counter or a poll function would be natively embedded into FigJam. But FigJam is still a quite new whiteboard. So let's see how it will evolve in the future. And then we have code block, timer, which seems to be also available here, and we'll look at it in a second, or we can upload images or links. So let's start with an image, and this is the thumbnail of my Miro versus Mural versus Glaxo review. The image can be replaced, cropped, and we can add a border. Let's now move to the top of the whiteboard. This icon brings us to the main menu. Here we have the timer, so let's leave three minutes and we can also pick a song. Then we have the voting tool. However, this is only available in the professional FigJam plan 
that costs 3 euros per month. The last option here is templates, which brings us to the same place that we've seen when we've opened a fake jam. Moving on to the right, we see a headphones icon. This is also a feature that is included only in the professional plan. It allows you to have audio conversations, but I'm not sure whether you can only have live conversations with your team members or if you can also attach an audio file to a specific object. The next option is your profile icon, and as the author you can decide to spotlight yourself. That's an equivalent of the focus mode or the bring to me mode, where everybody on the board will be taken to where your cursor is. Let's now have a look at the sharing options. You can invite people with an email address and you can decide what they can do, whether they can view only or also edit. You can also publish a board to a Figma community. Something nice here is that you can get an embed code. So you can embed your whiteboard as an iframe on your website, for example. The next option is comment. You can click anywhere on the board and leave a comment there. You can add an emoji or mention someone. All the comments will appear here on the right. Participants will also be able to reply to your comment and create a discussion thread. Very often I see the question, is FigGem the same as Miro? Are the two comparable? I don't think so. Miro plays in a different league. And you'll find out why in this next video here.